Chapter 20, Africa, Oceania, and the Americas. Learning Objectives. Identify the variety of material styles and cultural purposes that characterize traditional African art. Analyze the range of visual characteristics and meaning found in Oceanic and Australian art. Examine the continuation of artistic traditions in Native American cultures. Describe media and functions of art in Mesoamerica and South America. This is a map of Africa. Africa, a diversity of art in the African continent reflects a variety of cultures. North of the Sahara, art forms fall under either Egyptian, Roman, or Islamic traditions. It's covered in previous chapters. The focus on uh, sub-Saharan -Sah Africa, They're the head from the Nok culture, Nigeria, is here. Some of the earliest art forms are located in Africa. Terracotta in its nearly life size. This has vivid, vivid facial expressions. The male figure in Nok culture, 195 BCE to 205 CE terracotta. Yoruba and Benin. Ife is a Yoruba city in northwest Nigeria. This is a male portrait head. I have a skill on bronze casting. It's thin walled, hollow, it's naturalistic. Male portrait head. Ife, Nigeria, 13th century bronze. Yoruba and Benin is a neighboring uh, Benin culture. This head is somewhat more abstract. Uh, the bronze casting is a guarded secret. It's devoted to glorifying the kind. Only royal artisans could practice this technique. Head of an Oba, Nigeria, circa 1550, metalwork bronze. This is an ivory pendant from Benin. It's carved in 16th century. It portrays a queen mother. The human ha has human heads and a mud fish. Pendant mask, court of Benin, Nigeria, early 16th century, ivory, iron, and copper. The Yoruba peoples of Nigeria, this is a house post. It's meditation on the idea of support. Those depicted personify characteristics that support the community. Diminutive uh, proportions and almond-shaped parts. Alembe Alie. House Post Yoruba, Nigeria, mid 20th century, wooden paint. The Yoruba peoples of Nigeria, this uh, shows the house post seen in a 1959 photograph, tomb of former Chief Lisa, adds to the meaning of the community support. Bigger picture. Mali, Cameroon, and Congo, the Bamana people of Mali, carved wooden antelope figure headdresses of a dance performed to imitate the mythology of male and female Chiwara. Bamana Chiwara antelope headdresses near Bamako, Mali. Cameroon, this style is far removed from Ife and Benin. Separate areas of the headdress are defined by different patterns and texture. It Textures it reinterprets, not copies the human head. Mask, Bamalike people, Mabenjo, Cameroon, late 19th century, wood, paint, iron dowel, plant fiber, and plant gum. The Mangeka power figure from Congo is used to house medicinal matter. The metal pieces signify the agreement from civil cases and laws. It personifies the force of justice. The Mangaka power figure. Yambe people, Democratic Republic of the Congo, 19th century, wooden figure with iron nails. Ghana and Angola. Textile arts are highly developed. Many styles have specific uses. The kente cloth pattern Mita is worn when something unprecedented happens. It's famously worn by Kwame 
Naruma of Ghana when he won the national election for president. Kente cloth. Ghana. You mean a, something that has not happened before. 20th century cloth. It's a strip weave. Cut pile embroidery. It's one of the continent's oldest textile traditions. Men weave cloth using raffia fibers. Women embroider by lacing dyed strips. There's no knotting. It has a velvety texture and vibrant patterns. Cuba cup pile embroidery, raffia, Democratic Republic of the Congo, 20th century. Oceania and Australia. Oceania is named for thousands of Pacific Islands that comprise Melanesia, Micronesia, and Polynesia. They have shared traditional beliefs. Creation of the world is from the Earth Mother and Sky Father. Mana is a spiritual power in people, places, and things. Little pottery exists due to the clay, clay shortage. St they have tools of stone, bone, or shell. Materials they work with are of wood, bark, and small plants. It's Oceania and Australia. Melanesia, we have the Solomon Islands. There are wood carvings and masks for rituals. The prow figure with bird, God's voyagers that looks out for shoals and reefs. It's a protective prow figure from a war canoe. New Georgia Island, Solomon Islands, 19th century, wood with inlaid with mother of pearl. Melanesia, this is the New Ireland bird mask. It has strong carved patterns. A characteristic of oceanic art because it has inlaid shell eyes. Chickens are holding snakes symbolizing the opposition of sky and earth. New Ireland mask. Micronesia and Polynesia, carvings in Micronesia, Polynesia, and are streamlined and highly finished. The female figure, Nakuro Atoll, is an unusual degree of abstraction. It's likely a set of traditional carving rules. Female figure, Nakuro Atoll, Central Carolines, 19th century wood. We have Eastern, Easter Island in Polynesia. The Moai stone figures represent ancestors who have taken on a spiritual power. They are on platforms overlooking small settlements. Moai from the Easter Island, made of volcanic rock. This is the Hawaiian Amakua. It's an elimination of extraneous body details. Has, it's a powerful stance of a female figure. Human figure, Forbes Cave, Hawaii, Koa Wood. The Morai Meeting House brings together many art forms. It's used for extended family gatherings and ancestor honoring rituals. It symbolizes ancestors' presence, the face and body at the top of the gable, Abstract figures represent other ancestors. The Watangi Meeting House, Bay of Islands, North Island, New Zealand, 1934 to 1940, front view. The Maori Meeting House interior is even more ornate than the outside. The ribs are painted in curving, non-representational patterns, relief carvings and abstract patterns or in flax on walls. Watangi Treaty Grounds, Maori Meeting House Interior. Australia humans present are present 40,000 years ago. They're the aboriginals. They're semi-nomadic hunter-gatherers. There's a bond between humans and natures and dream time. In Bart painting, we have the myth of the Wawalak sisters. The sisters wandered across the land in dream time. The story is often illustrated in Aboriginal art. Aboriginal imagery has remained relatively constant for hundreds of years. The myth of the Wawalak sisters. Eucalyptus bark painting. 
Here's the Americas, North, Central, and South America. Native North America, we have the Hopewell culture, which is modern Ohio. This in the second and sixth century CE, there are large burial mounds. Later, it's the Dina culture. This is the Great Serpent Mound, circa 1070 CE. Many Native American artists today make traditional works after a period of disuse when the reservations were first established. Serpent, Great Serpent Mound, Ohio, Adena culture, circa 1070 CE. In the plains, we have the Plains Indians, the Mato Tope is a four bears. It's buffalo hide, exploit, painting, moving figures in profile with no horizon line. Matotope, four bears robe with Matotope's exploits. Circa 1835, it's buffalo hide, red wool cloth, sinew, dyed porcupine quills, horse hair and human hair, brown, yellow, and black pigment. On the plains, we have the arrival of the white settlers that impacted hide painting. There's a decline of buffalo led warriors to seek other surfaces to use. The subject matter included battles with the United States military forces with Howling Wolf at the Sand Creek Massacre. It's a ledger book. The artist witnessed the event in 1864 and painted it 10 years later. Howling Wolf at the Sand Creek Massacre, 1874 to 75, pen, ink, and watercolor on ledger paper. Howling Wolf was a warrior and artist, a member of the Cheyenne tribe. After the battle in North Texas, he sensed futility of attacks against the U.S. government, he surrendered, marked a drastic turn in his life, he was imprisoned as part of a social experience, his hair was cut, given a Christian name, they were given Christian names, classroom at Fort Marion. Chief Howling Wolf, Cheyenne Indian. This is classroom at Fort Marion, 1876, colored pencil on paper. In the southwest, we have the Navajo of Arizona. They're resourceful weavers. There's a second phase of Chief Blanket, created before the Navajo were exiled to New Mexico in 1863 to 68. This is made on a loom. It's a dense fabric that's nearly waterproof. Chief Blanket, because it cost, meant few could afford to own one. Second phase chief blanket, Navajo, circa 1830 to 50. It's hand spun wool with natural dyes. In the southwest, we have the Pueblo peoples are best known for their pottery, traditionally done by women. Each Pueblo has its own style. The Coma pot is made from a local earthenware. It's shaped without a wheel. The abstract symbols refer to forces of nature and community or community life. Jar Acoma Pueblo, 1870 to 1880, earthenware and pigments. In the southwest, Pueblo peoples with the Kachinas, it's the spirits of invisible life forces, the Zuni Pueblo and Hopi areas. The likenesses are used by costume mill members and ceremonies. Marshall Loma Kima, Hopi Kachina at night. 1871, painted wood. Pacific and Northwest Coast, they make baskets in the Pacific Coast region. They're weaved so tightly they can hold water and art is passed down maternally. Pomo Feather Basket, California before 1920, feathers, beads, and shells. Pacific Northwest, we have the Northwest Coast peoples, an object such as an animal or plant that serves as an emblem of a family or a clan is a totem. Totem poles are dedicated to mythology. Uh, Tlingit Community House has abstract animal shapes. Tlingit Community House, Ketchikan, Alaska. Mesoamerica, the Olmec culture, is near today's Mexico City, the city of Teotihuacan. 
the pyramid of the sun is in the image. It's among the largest pyramids in the world. It sits over a deep cave and it's aligned to face sunset on August 12th, the first day of the Mayan calendar. Pyramid of the sun, Teotihuacan, Mexico, first seventh century CE. And we have the Olmec culture is a temple of the feathered serpent. It's the opposite of the pyramid of the sun. It has relief heads of the storm god. Temple of the feathered serpent detail in Teotihuacan, Mexico, 150 to 200 CE. The Mayan, they have hundreds of stone temples at Tikal. Temple one is 200 foot pyramid with a temple at the top, it has walls and roofs that are richly carved and painted. In Guatemala. Mayans uh, have the lentil 24 from Yaxchilan. There are written symbols along the edges. Fleshly, fleshy figures are performing a ritual. There's a rope going through his tongue. Lentil 24, Yaxchilan. Mexico, Guatemala, the Mayans. 709 CE, made of limestone. Mesoamerica with the Toltec civilization. It's a bridge between the Mayan and the Aztec peoples. The recumbent figure from Chichen Itza, the Shakmul. Shakmul. It's a bowl held, uh, the bowl held sacrificial offerings. The bowl would have been on his stomach. It has a massive carved figure. Shakmu, 10th to 12th century, Toltec made of stone. The Aztecs, the artistic style sums up preceding styles. The human sacrifices at the pyramid are honoring both the storm god and the worm god. Vessel of the feathered serpent, uh, Quetzalcoatl, Quetzalcoatl for sacrificial offerings. It's a typical of the Aztec art's menacing aspects. Feathered Serpent, Quetzalcoatl, Mexico, Aztec, 1450 to 1521, made of stone. In South America, we have the Incas, a skillful shaping and fitting of stone. The Royal Retreat Center here is Machu Picchu, which is in modern-day Peru. They escaped the Spanish detection that it seems to be part of the mountainside. Machu Picchu, Peru, the Incas. In South America, we have the Nazca peoples, the geometric lines and patterns in the sand in the image, they're perfectly straight lines for miles. Hummingbird, Nazca Valley, Peru. South America with the Curo Cups, one of few surviving Inca art forms. It's carved and painted for ancient rituals, has flat patterns, stylistic descendants of pottery and textile design. Curo Cup, Peru, late 16th, 17th century, wood with pigment inlay.